finally found him, Revelen. So tell me, where are we at right now? Uh, we're in downtown Los Angeles at my uh, laboratory, my uh, shop. And um, this is where I get most of my stuff done. So tell me how you got started with uh, with all the bike uh, work. Um, with the bike and car thing, though, with the bike, I started with my dad up there. Old number 75, he was in a racing flat track in the uh, late 50s, early 60s. We are at your shop. Tell me a little bit about what the process is of putting one of these bikes together. It basically starts off as a frame. You know, we find a raw frame, such as the one behind you right there. And um, we get the frame, we modify it, you know, because I dig Harley stuff, but it's not the the era of what I saw growing up. So I always got to modify it and make it the way I, I saw what was going on in the 70s because I've stuck to the 70s and really haven't graduated since then. You know, and I do a style bike, which is uh, Frisco style rigid. Um, these guys from up north kind of developed it and it was a more functional you know, piece of machine than, it, than the bikes nowadays. And like I said, it starts with a frame, goes over the tank, we hand roll our own tank, we do most of our own tank work. Um, find an old motor, we kind of stay tradition, you know, true to tradition when it comes to motors. I find all the old antique stuff, start piecing it together. And then you get into a mock-up stage, which is this, basically. And the mock-up stage is making sure that everything's correct, it fits. You know, before you paint it, you can't weld on, you know, brackets or, you know, modify it because it's already been painted. So you get it in the mock-up stage and you break it down, paint it, bring it back in final assembly. So. You know, that's, that's, that's the process, basically. So when you part with your bikes, do you internally cry? No, no, no. In fact, I feel kind of good because I'm, I'm the kind of person, when the, you know, the starting point and the finishing point. I'm happy when they're, you know, the finishing point. It's hard because I don't have a paper and pencil or something to, to practice on and throw it away. You know, I don't really practice on huge, expensive automobiles or motorcycles. So when I do it, it's like, okay, this is the finished product. This is what it started with. It started off as a rusty piece of junk and this is what it ended up as. So you know, the process is a lot different from any other person maybe creating some, some kind of other art. So there's a creative side and a creative element obviously to everything here in your shop, but then there's a business aspect. How have you been able to develop that side of you to be able to bring it all together? You know, I saw a shop and I go, hey, I want, you know, way back when, and I go, hey, I'm, that's what I'm going to do, you know. I was floating around to different shops, kind of freelancing and welding and mechanic work and stuff. And I finally, you know, I don't take orders that good, you know, from bosses or, you know, people. So I just, you know, I had to switch up the game plan here and, you know, got creative and started my own thing. You know, it evolved on its own. But the business part, no, I'm, I'm horrible at it. I'm the last person to want to come and say, hey, what do you think about uh, business strategy or platforms or taxes or exempt numbers or corporate numbers? You got me on that one. Do kids go up to you then? How do you do this bike? I want to learn how to do it. Yeah, I have an open door policy to any kid. You know, any kid who wants to come and learn how to weld or, you know. Um, I had a kid, uh, Omar, who just left recently. I had him when he was 16 until he was 19. He had just lost his brother. And um, he's working for the union now, but he came in sweeping my shop and he walked out, you know, a certified uh, welder, you know, blueprints. You know, I, just, I sent him to school, I sent him to get his license, I sent him to get everything. And it's funny too, because the guy that he came in with his first time in my shop, that was 16, um, we were watching TV one day, eating lunch, and his partner's in a high speed chase from a bank robbery. And he looked at me, he goes, hey man, you know, if it wasn't for you, I'd probably be in that car because my best friend are chasing me right now in a bank robbery. So, you know, to me, it made me feel good. You know, there's one kid who, who, who kind of got it and, you know, did the right thing. Oh, well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us here on Kubiko Television. Yeah, that's right.